Michael Brown here. I thought I'd do a little demonstration today on how to do a pitch test. So uh, we're going to use 3D Master Kit for this demonstration. I'm going to make a pitch test target, uh, modify that a little bit in Photoshop, print it out, and then try and see what is the correct pitch for a 40 LPI sheet. So to begin with, uh, 3D Master Kit is here on the screen. I'm going to pull down from Project to Pitch Test. Now, it generally keeps the last settings I had used. Uh, you can see here in the center of this dialog box, it wants to make a simple black and white pitch test chart. I don't like using that. I like making full color charts. I find them easier to read, and so that's what we're going to do today. So the first thing I'm going to do is come down here and pick the color setting. So this will make a stripe of red, a stripe of white, stripe of green, stripe of white, stripe of blue, stripe of white. And that will be the pattern we use for this chart. Now, I do, you know, I make little modifications to the way 3D Master Kit does this. Uh, they have a feature called Control Lines and a feature called Place Title over the test strip. And I like to use both of those. The Control Lines basically print uh, three black vertical lines in the center of the target. And that helps me to align the lens to the print. This checkbox that says place title over the test strips, uh, 3D Master Kit has two ways of doing it. You can turn this off, and then the uh, values for the uh, LPIs will be printed on the left edge of the sheet, or you can turn it on and it will be right over the, uh, the pattern. Maybe I'll, I'll. So I'm working with a 40 LPI lens, so I'm going to put 40 LPI in here. For test step, I'm going to use 0 0.005, so 5 thousandths of an LPI. My resolution is going to be 720 because I'm working with an Epson printer. If you're using a Canon or HP, you could put 600 in that area. The width of the stripe is basically how high this little stripe is going to be on the test sheet, and I'm going to put that at 0 0.5 inches. I'm working with inches. You can use master kit preferences to set this up for either metric or imperial values. The length of the strip, I'm going to do a 16 by 20 sheet, and I'm going to make this a little larger than 16 by 20. And that's because I bring it into Photoshop. You're going to see my workflow. If you're going to print directly from master kit, then just make this the appropriate size you want. Like it could be 16 inches. And then interval, I just like using 0 0.2 for that. Uh, if we look here under printer settings, it sees my Epson 4900, but the driver currently is not set up for finest detail. In that case, it would show 720 PPI. So if you're going to print from MasterKit, you'd want to change this. I'm not going to. I'm going to print from Photoshop so I can ignore that. And then down below, here's a little... Uh, readout of what size that target is going to be. So it's going to be 17.082 inches wide by 13 inches high. Um, here's the number of stripes in each direction from our 40 LPI, both slightly smaller and slightly larger. I'm going to increase that until this readout is larger than 20 inches. So it says 21.556. Now if I hit generate, it will take those parameters and generate the pitch test target and show it to us on screen. You can see a little green progress bar at the bottom. Okay, so here it is. So it has values of uh, 40 on the top, 39 below. Every once in a while when I use MasterKit with different LPIs and values, the lower numbers will be on top and the higher numbers will be at the bottom. So I, can never figure out, you know, from test to test why that is. I've, I've never researched it. But, but the gist of it is, this looks appropriate. This is what I want to use. So we'll come back to the pitch test dialog box. And this time I'm going to save it to a file. So on the desktop, it has given it this name. I'm going to save it in Photoshop format. 
And the reason I, I do the Photoshop format is sometimes when I just use bitmap and I bring it into Photoshop, it has the wrong PPI value and I have to go in and correct that. So by saving it in Photoshop, all the right information seems to transfer over. So I'll hit save on the desktop. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Let's go over to Photoshop. I'll double click the window here. And here we have not the one we just made. Yes, we do. Yes, it is right here. So pitch is 40.005 LPI variance, 720 PPI density, and 17 by 21. So we will open that up. Here it is. Now I'm going to zoom in. And here you can see the bands for 40 LPI. And you can see they go red, white, green, white, blue, white. Now the lines in the center I talked about are here. It's great that MasterKit has that, but for my eyes, I have a hard time seeing those when I line up the lens to the print. So I'm going to make those a little wider. So using the magic wand, I can click in here and go to my info palette and it says that band is three pixels wide. So I come over to my marquee, pull down to fixed size. I can have three pixels wide. I have a height set of 24. That's larger than the 20 I'm going to use, but that's not an issue. And I will just click in the screen band, hit option delete. That will fill that selection with my foreground color, which is currently black. And now I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to deselect that. So I can see a much thicker line going through the screen. And the last thing I want to do, well, not the last thing, <laughs> second from the last thing I want to do, is this 40 LPI band. I want to put a little square there. So I'm going to go to my marquee and make this little box. And again, Option delete fills it with the foreground color. So why did I do that? Often when I'm measuring these charts, I'm standing in a distance and I might see, oh, the band that's three above 40 is the correct band. Um, but it's hard to read the values when the lens sheet is actually on top of that. So by putting that little black mark by the 40, that gives me some reference. I can say, oh, you know, band number six above or band number three below the black square. That would be the, the correct one. Now, the last thing I want to do, my sheet is 16 by 20. I'm going to go to canvas size. Oops. Not centimeters. I want inches. So width 16, height 20. It's going to give me a little message. Are you sure you want to do this because you're clipping and it's going to be smaller? And that's exactly what I want to do. So I'll let it proceed. And then we'll send this to the printer. So I've got File, Print. Using the Epson 4900. I have a preset for a lenticular sheet, 17 by 22. I'll hit Save. And I would hit Print. Now, I won't make you watch the printing process. It takes about 15 minutes to print a 16 by 20 on my machine. So we'll just pause right here and we'll go to the next step. All right, so I have the sheet and I want to laminate the print to the sheet. First thing I have to set up the laminator. So this 40 LPI sheet has a different thickness than the last sheet I used. So I just twisted these, lifting the roller up off this board. Now I'm going to place the sheet in there so it's under the roller. I'm going to move these until I feel resistance right here. They're both at, you know, approximately 5 o'clock. I'll go half turn, 11 o'clock, 11 o'clock. I like to tape these down. I'll turn this on. I'll back this sheet out. All 
Okay. I notice there's a little dust here. Like keep everything nice and clean. All right, let's go over to the light box. The way I like to work is take an exacto knife, slice through. Take the top edge of the release liner off. And I'm going to clean my print. Just trying to get any dust off of it. Tape this to the light box. piece of silicone release paper. You may remember there's a black vertical stripe running up and down. I want to get that all lined up. That looks pretty good. I do like to take my loop and confirm the alignment. Yeah, that looks very nice. Moving a little closer. I hold that down. Take that sheet out. And then press down on that top edge where the adhesive was to tack that in place. I'm just cutting the tape. Release the print. Okay, let's take this to the laminator. All right, the laminator has a foot pedal. I'm just going to press down and roll this print in ever so slightly. I can peel the print back. With this piece of tape, I'm going to grab part of the release liner. Which I've done like so. Now, trying to get out of the way of the camera so you can see this. Okay. I'm just slowly pulling the release liner off as the print goes through. Here we go. Now we'll check that on the light box. So the lens sheet has this little release liner on top. It's actually, it's a protective mask. I'll just take that off. It's easier to see what's going on. I'm gonna take the camera off the tripod, come over here. I apologize, the light box uses fluorescent lights and since they're slightly out of sync with the camera, you get this color rolling through. But you can see the idea here now. What we're looking for is the band that looks all solid. And it can be any color. It can be the blue, it can be the green, or it can be the red. Now you see that black dot, that's the actual 40 LPI band, and that's not correct. And you want the camera set 
at the proper viewing distance, which typically is between one and a half and two and a half times the diagonal of the print size. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Sony still camera and take some still pictures because it has a tendency not to show the, the color banding. So I'll measure here. See, this would be about the right viewing distance. I'll put the camera there. Got a red shot. Green. And blue. So we can open those up on the computer. All right, now you know my process for doing pitch testing. 3D Master Kit to Photoshop to print, laminate, measure, and there you go. This was a sample of a 40 LPI sheet. I hope you found this video useful. I'll see you next time. Take care.